Zappos, the Las Vegas-based online footwear and apparel company with over $1 billion in annual sales, is passionate that their employees have fun at work. They believe that a happy workforce is a motivated workforce, and that translates into delivering off-the-chart service to Zappos customers. And as we all know, happy customers are repeat customers. In January 2011, Fortune Magazine ranked Zappos sixth in its top 100 companies to work for list for 2010. Zappos CEO, Tony Shea, believes that spreading happiness in the workplace will allow employees to spread it in their daily lives too. In 2009, Amazon.com added another chapter to the Zappos success story by purchasing it for $1.2 billion. Shea and his team continue operating the company while keeping its culture and core values intact. Okay, Zappos started in 1999. It was originally called ShoeSite.com. It was the idea of a man named Nick Swinmurn. Nick Swinmurn actually couldn't find the, the shoe that he wanted in local malls and through various vendors. And about this time, there was a big kind of dot-com boom. And so he went home and got online and said, well, the shoe's gotta be online somewhere, and looked around, and there just wasn't a great place online to buy shoes. And said, well, why don't I try to find a way to centralize this inventory and make it available online? Nick actually took pictures of shoes, uploaded them to a website, and then sold them online, would go to the shoe store, buy the shoes, and send them out to the person. So actually creating a real working prototype. Quickly, once they found that there was an affinity for people to start to purchase online, they wanted to change the name to uh, Zappos, which is a derivative of Zapatos, just a Spanish word for shoes. It's grown from being this company that was focused on just satisfying a need to find a pair of shoes to being a company focused on providing the very best customer service. Today our fulfillment center is right down the street from the UPS World Hub, so it allows us to ship product very quickly. We love getting stories from people on the East Coast who order you know, shoes or apparel before they go to bed at night and the box is waiting for them at the office the next day. So it started with customer service, then into clothing, then really solidifying the culture to take us to the next level. In the past, the role of the manager was simply to tell employees how to perform their jobs in order to accomplish the goals of the company. Today, the role of management has mostly changed and continues to evolve at a rapid pace. Today's successful leaders manage with the input of teams, motivating and coaching rather than dictating. They are skilled at communicating to both their employees and their customers. Everything is based on teamwork. One very simple philosophy is that we focus on managing tasks, not people. We actually are required to spend about 20% of our time outside the office with our team. And that might be anything from team building that is, you know, a happy hour, or, you know, in the past we've actually jumped off the side of the stratosphere. So we're constantly encouraged and encouraging our employees um, to go out and, and experience things other than just in the office with their team. At the end of the day, if an issue arises or if change needs to be made, there's a certain comfort level that happens um, where you can actually go and have a conversation and be proactive and um, be fruitful in the decision-making process. In order to meet their organizational goals, successful companies integrate four functions into their management process. Planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. Starting with the, the planning element is what's the actual goal for that, that department and that group? And how does that play into a larger vision where people can see themselves in it? Where they can say, okay, here's how I can be a part of that goal that we're doing. Longer term plans, you know, whether it's one, two, or five year plans, are constantly being evaluated, constantly being um, retooled and tweaked just to make sure that whatever it is the individual department or the individual team is doing is helping to sustain uh, our growth and our overall uh, kind of vision for the company. So with the organizing side, it's, it's really about making sure that we have the right team and then figuring out who's going to do what according to one of our core values which is pursue growth and learning. Another core value is being passionate and determined. So when we combine those two, it's really a process of figuring out, okay, what does somebody want to learn and what are they passionate about? Because that's where they're going to provide the most energy to the company. So if we can organize especially around those two core values, then we're going to have essentially the right people on the right place on the bus to make that happen. Leadership style here at Zappos funnels down through our, our CEO, Tony Shea. You know, Tony's led the company um, you know, since the early early days and 
um, really kind of help put a base, a foundation um, into place now that, that we've grown. You know, leaders in each department um, all obviously have their kind of own way of leading, but by and large, it kind of goes back to empowering um, your team, your employees to make decisions on their own. We're not going to tell people what they have to do and, you know, you know, micromanage. In a sense, it's just more, here's what we're trying to achieve, do what it takes to get there. Essentially, we don't believe that you can control anything. You can essentially just take actions that you believe in and hope it's going to make the difference that you're going to see. But we don't believe we can control those outputs the same way we can't really control people. Any successful business needs to be able to plan. The most important part of this function is to create a corporate vision. A vision tells everyone, such as employees, potential shareholders, and customers, why it exists and what it intends to accomplish. A company's mission statement takes the vision statement to the next level. It explains in more definitive terms the philosophy of the company, what its products and services are, what its customer needs are, and what it needs to do to be successful. Planning is, is a huge part of our business like it is any other business. As you grow fast um, and a company that you know is hiring people left and right and uh, yeah, adding categories and new business ventures, new revenue streams, new um, strategic partners that we can bring on. What's the actual goal for that, that department and that group? And how does that play into a larger vision where people can see themselves in it? Where they can say, okay, here's how I can be a part of that goal that we're doing. Organizing allows the company to provide the proper resources and environment to achieve its goals and objectives. Organizational charts help define the levels of management and non-supervisory staff where tasks are assigned and procedures developed. So the goals and objectives that really guide us here at, at, at Zappos come down to a few things. We try to focus on, on thinking long term and all the decisions that we make within the company should wrap around our core values. So these concepts are both specific and vague at the same time. They're specific in terms of being able to visualize it, but vague in terms of thinking how we get there, the strategy, the objectives are really up to us. In terms of looking for people in management positions, really look for people who are drivers, people who take full responsibility for even a small project and say that they're gonna take it from beginning to finish. They take full responsibility for it. They don't blame others. They really rally and inspire other people to, um, to work with them. So it's not anybody um, who's dictating a certain style. If anything, it's um, somebody who allows you to, to flourish and they're more of like a gardener. Leading is more than creating a vision for the company. It's about communicating it effectively as well as providing guidance and motivation for that vision to come to fruition. Today's leading companies establish corporate values that become part of the company's daily culture. Our, our decision-making process is really done according to the core values. That's the framework that we look to. And if somebody can say and make a good argument for why they made a decision based on those core values, then that's enough to really justify it. If a mistake was made, then we want to pursue growth and learning and learn from that and learn how we might do it differently next time. Sometimes you need to have um, just a, a a way to kind of quickly break down it in very simple terms, what is the best way to approach this decision. A quick SWOT analysis is a great way to do that. So in terms of, of a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, we found that it's a good matrix to evaluate new opportunities. So we don't use it constantly in terms of a decision-making framework, but when venturing into a new market or new product, any kind of new program, then we can take that SWOT analysis and see if it's something that would be worth exploring. Companies like Zappos empower employees to make decisions on how to properly handle situations in a manner that is reflective of its values, understanding that customer satisfaction is vital to its success. This is a fantastic day here at Zappos. How can I help you today? I received some Nike workout clothes as a gift. I wanted to exchange them. No problem. Um, I, what I was interested in is item number 747-5795. That's a nice deep fryer. Yeah, I'm going in another direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put a rush on there for you. We empower employees by, in, in a lot of different ways. One is that we, uh, 
we recognize in order for people to make decisions and to be able to, to, to kind of act in the best interest of the company and to really to be as productive as possible, you need to have a lot of different people um, that are off doing things and then communicating those things back to you. If they have an idea, again, it goes back to relationship building and the rapport that they have with the manager. So there's no timidness in sharing an idea or trying to drive or make change. In many ways, controlling is a simple yet important part of the four levels of the management process. It's where management reviews performance against its goals and objectives. When the goals are met, people get rewarded. If they're not, management must take steps to adjust and fix the problem. The leadership styles at Zappos have really contributed to the success of the company, just really coming down to the empowerment. And there's this visionary who you know, is open and honest about what that vision is, and that gets infiltrated downwards. So every single person um, feels empowered to be able to execute upon that vision. So if anything, every single person in this company becomes a brand leader. Whether it's to a vendor or a customer or an internal partner, that that customer service can be seen throughout the company. Although it's true that most companies judge their level of success by financial metrics, for companies like Zappos, there are additional elements too. Employee and customer satisfaction are paramount to its success and high on the list of how they judge themselves. Their 10 core values, the first being deliver wow through service, reflects this culture and how as a company they exist. When we set out putting together the core values, we started out with a, a large list of, of attributes or, or um, things that we felt were important. And we slowly whittled that down into um, these 10 core values that uh, really encompass what we're trying to accomplish here. So we believe in wowing employees, wowing bosses, wowing vendors. Are we going to do something that is not going to create a wow customer service? Well, if there's any chance that we won't, then you know it's probably not something we're going to move forward with. They're really what we base a lot of our decisions on, and, and the core values have really helped us get to the point where we are today. More and more, companies are working to make sure that their employees experience work and quality of lifestyle balance as they collectively strive for financial success. Will you someday work in a culture like this? We don't consider ourselves some a company that sells shoes or sells apparel or lower prices than anyone else. Our value proposition is, is really providing the best possible experience for the customer. We obviously want to be a profitable um, company, but it's more about um, the way we do business rather than just business itself.